first through four. It's been more than a week since we have seen measurable snow, and we're going to tack on a few more days, but we can already see our next chance over the horizon. We'll look at it coming up. Karen? Also, first and four, the rush to get vaccinated. We're tracking the next phase of COVID vaccines in the state of Michigan, including a message from the lieutenant governor. President Trump is facing new pressure this afternoon from the House of Representatives, and Michigan's Debbie Dingell was the one holding the gavel during the first step. Paula. Hi, Karen. I'm talking to people who say that the healing of this nation is a long way off. They will explain why. These stories and more are happening right now on Local 4 First at 4. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. Michigan's push to get residents vaccinated against COVID-19 is entering a new phase today. If there are two words you need to embrace, they are probably patience and persistence. Starting today, anyone age 65 and older is now eligible to get the vaccine. Also, many essential workers like teachers, first responders, child care and transportation employees are also now at the front of the line. Here in Michigan, you must make an appointment. There's no need to line up or camp out like we have seen in other states. An appointment is needed. Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist says getting the shot is critical. That's really important because everyone getting a vaccine is key to us moving forward with our life, with our economy, with our jobs, with our kids getting back to school and all this. This is really critical. Now, people need to make an appointment to get this vaccine because we want to make sure there is an orderly and clear process. Now, many of you have been asking how you get those appointments. Now, we did post information online at clickondetroit.com. And ahead of five, Help Me Hank explains the two paths for seniors and essential workers to try and get an appointment. We're also finding the availability situation is a little different county by county. Here's Local 4 Sean Lay. We continue to track the COVID-19 vaccines, where you want them and where you need them. Keep in mind, this is a very fluid situation. We follow it hour to hour as the state works with the federal government on getting vaccine where you need it. Let's talk about St. Clair County. Just before noon today, they announced they're no longer taking appointments. There's not enough vaccine there. Ingham County, 12,000 appointments made, not enough supply to meet that early, early demand. Oakland County dealing with 69,000 doses right now, 20,000 for Wayne County, but double that more 42,000 for the city of Detroit as they begin vaccinations Wednesday with an appointment live at five o'clock. We talked to the people at the top of Beaumont's health system. A lot going on there. They are poised to vaccinate thousands, but need to hear from the state when more vaccine is on the way. They are ready, but they need to know when those shipments are coming. We'll see you at five o'clock. All right, thank you, Sean. And we are tracking a lot of information from county health departments, the state and local hospitals. We'll bring you updates as we get them. Meantime, here's a look at the newest COVID numbers. The state just told us it recorded more than 4,500 new cases over the past two days, plus an additional 47 people have died. That brings the total lives lost in Michigan to more than 13,400 since the crisis began. The Michigan Secretary of State has launched an election audit to test the results of the 2020 vote. Secretary Jocelyn Benson says the audit is a standard part of the state's election process. More than 18,000 ballots will be retrieved to be reviewed by hand. Today, a bipartisan group oversaw the roll of 20 10-sided dice with the results put into the software to randomly select the ballots. Now, local clerks have two weeks to draw those ballots and review them. The Secretary of State will announce the results when the county audit is complete. The message from House Democrats is clear today. They want President Trump out of office as soon as possible, one way or another. Just a few hours ago, they started laying the groundwork with some of the very first steps. Our Kimberly Gill is in the newsroom. And Kim, Michigan Congresswoman Debbie Dingell at the podium for this turning point. You're right, Karen, and good afternoon to you. Democrat Debbie Dingell was in charge this morning on the floor of the House of Representatives. The majority party introduced a resolution calling on Vice President Mike Pence to trigger the 25th Amendment to remove President Trump from office. Consent needed to be unanimous to move forward. House Resolution 21, resolution calling on Vice President Michael R. Pence to convene and mobilize the principal officers of the executive departments of the cabinet to activate Section 4 of the 25th Amendment to declare President Donald J. Trump incapable of executing the duties of his office and to immediately exercise powers as acting president. For what purpose does the gentleman from West Virginia rise? I object. Objection is from 
And that objection stopped proceedings for now, but the House will hold a full roll call vote on the resolution tomorrow, and it's expected to pass. Then the vice president will have 24 hours to act. Right now, indications are that Vice President Pence will not invoke the 25th Amendment. By Wednesday, the House could take a vote on a single article of impeachment that accuses President Trump of incitement of insurrection for his role in encouraging the attack, the attack last week on the U.S. Capitol. Uh, there are a lot of moving parts here. Nothing new from the president who hasn't been seen in public and can no longer tweet, of course, as he's been banned from Twitter. Uh, we'll have more from Washington tonight on the News at 5, and we'll bring you updates every day as we see how this process plays out. For now, Karen, we'll send it back to you. All right, we appreciate it. Thank you, Kim. Sure. Security concerns are not going away between now and Inauguration Day, which is January 20th. The FBI is warning of plans for armed protests in Washington, D.C. and all 50 state capitals. They could happen any time between January 16th and the 20th. The head of the National Guard says at least 10,000 troops will be deployed in D.C. by this Saturday. Washington, D.C.'s mayor is asking citizens to change their plans for Inauguration Day. Our goals right now uh, are to encourage Americans to participate virtually uh, and to protect the District of Columbia from a repeat of the violent insurrection experienced at the Capitol and its grounds on January the 6th. The National Park Service is suspending tours of the Washington Monument. They also close roads, parking areas and restrooms along the National Mall. Closures begin today and are expected to continue through January 24th. Now, while the impeachment process plays out, President-elect Joe Biden says the theme of his inauguration will be America United. But many people are asking, how do you move forward with unity without accountability? Our Paula Tutman taking a look today at that difficult balancing act at a critical moment. In 1960, the Guri family left their home in Cuba to escape a brutal dictator named Fidel Castro. They took the guns at my mother and said, Senora, come with us. Grateful for the citizenship of a free nation, one of those children grew up to be the psychologist, co-host for a video podcast on ethics called The Rabbi and the Shrink, and bad behavior expert, Dr. Margarita Guri. And she's deeply pained by the insurrection at the nation's capital last week. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And while there are those calling for accountability and healing. One of the things that is really frustrating to me uh, at this particular moment is when I hear, uh, you know, from people like our distinguished minority leader, Kevin McCarthy, talk about uh, this is a moment of healing. You can't, the, the people who have helped cause this, you know, are not the people who can lead in healing. They need to move out of the way. Uh, to try to overturn a legitimate election, to try to trample on the will of the American people is something that is unforgivable. Dr. Guri believes there must be accountability, not just for our elected leaders, but ourselves and our neighbors. But it also starts with each person. How did I contribute? So if you're out there listening, how did I contribute to these events, whatever they are, unless each person takes responsibility for their portion to it? Did I vote? Did I not vote? How did I contribute? Did I flare up? in the social media and add to the negative, hateful rhetoric. But when there are still proactive lies being told in the echo chambers that promote lies, how can everyone hear the truth to find reconciliation? I asked Professor Dave Dulio, Director of Civic Engagement for Oakland University. At some point, both sides have to accept the outcome <laughs> and then turn the attention to what really matters, which is governing, right, which is uh, acting as elected representatives of the people to better society, to better uh, the state, the nation, uh, by addressing problems and issues that are on the minds of uh, of the voters and and of the citizens, and and that and there there's no better example of that than right now. Yeah, so right now, there's only one party with a smattering, so we're talking about Democrats, with a smattering of Republicans seeking to hold elected leaders, as well as the president, responsible for their rhetoric and even perhaps their alleged actions. I've been talking to, Karen, a lot of people about this, a lot of people who study this stuff, usually in other countries, but who study this stuff, and they really believe that until criminal acts become 
criminal acts, no matter who you vote for, it'll be very difficult to get the us back into the U.S., the United States. Unfortunately, that is a very good point. You are right. And that self-reflection, important point as well. All right. Thank you, Paula. Well, right now, let's get a sneak peek at the forecast. Ben Bailey in our weather office, or I should say in his weather office, uh, sunshine was really nice this weekend, Ben. It came out, and I felt like it was summer, and it was time to grill. Yeah, Karen, uh, it definitely felt great, and it doesn't look like at all what it did over the weekend. We've got clouds over Detroit, and it looks like those are going to be with us through most of this forecast. Current temperatures are just below freezing. Got a 28 out there in Adrian. Otherwise, low 30s is what we're looking at. And here's what we're tracking going forward. Cloudy skies for the work week, but those temperatures are going to be above normal. In fact, we'll get even some milder numbers in here over the next couple days. Coming up, we'll talk more about our weekend system in just a few minutes. Karen? All right. Thank you, Ben. Still had a pop superstar moving toward the top of a very elite list. That includes Michael Jackson, Garth Brooks, and the Beatles. Let me guess who the newest member of the club might be. Also, the winners are. We'll show you the vehicles that are driving away with top honors in the auto industry. The first guns at the Michigan Capitol building, a ban on open carry had failed in the past. Today, supporters gave it another try. We'll tell you what just happened this afternoon. The search to identify the suspects who stormed the